Hey, it's Ice Age TV, and what are we doing today? Oh, well, it's EV Age TV now, right? So, looky here. So, here's my F 150 Lightning still charging. And I tell you, you know, remembering to plug these vehicles in at nighttime, I mean, you may think, ah, what's the big deal? It's a big deal. You have no idea how many times I bored I walked out of this shop and you forget to turn you plug this thing in. So like last night, I really should have plugged this thing in about six or seven o'clock. I didn't plug it in till like close to nine o'clock. And here it is ten o'clock and it's still not fully charged. So, you know, this is the 220, you know, receptable. And then my wife brings her car over last night. She drove it to work, and usually she drives every other day to work, not every day. But she had to go to work again today, and I had no idea that her she was doing that. So she drove it over for me to plug it in. Well, I've got my other, you know, vehicle sitting here in the garage. So, the, you know, the plug, yeah, if I need brains, I would have put this plug outside my barn here. You know, to put this here, but the only trick to that is once you go to the exterior plug, you have to buy a GFI breaker, and that GFI breaker is like I think 350 bucks. You can even get one, so it's very, very expensive to do that. So, uh, it's all about the EVH. Look at this here, I got a personalized tag one EVH, and then I have another tag that says. EVH, where's that vehicle, right? What other vehicle is being driven right now because uh, we do a lot of miles, it's a lot of driving. So, anyways, gotta go to work and I gotta unplug this thing. Let's see what this thing says on its charge. Now, if you follow my video, some may say, Well, what about that charging station? And there's my tab the exhaust that I bought for my new Challenger Elite. That I'm gonna do a video on that, putting those on, yeah. And it came to the wrong address. The back box is all rained on. But here's the power. There's the supercharger that I got as part of the purchase of the uh, truck. But, yeah, where is it? So, you know, that, that makes a huge difference. But here's the problem. I don't have enough power in this barn and property to make that work. <laughs> so, I've got an electrician that's pulling permits. And since I was gone for six weeks and then he had COVID... He had COVID before I left town. So that's a whole other program where I need to get Dominion Electric to pull in all new power into the uh, my property. I'm going to come in the back side here to here. And I, I did talk to them, and I won't pay for anything since my electric bill is so expensive. They are not going to charge me. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're not going to charge me to do all that work. What I'll be paying my electrician to put in the panel and get it all set up. So... Uh, and we're going to do it over here. So we're going to set everything up over here. And we might actually just jump it back over to here. I don't know. We got some different ideas. But the whole point is the supercharger station, that would change everything. Because now I can charge my, my lightning truck up, I guess, in three, four hours. That's what I'm going to guess. And then my wife's car over there, I would guess, if you know, maybe an hour or two. So that changes everything. But that's a whole other project, a whole other day for the immediate future. This is what I got to deal with. And it's just about managing the time. Right time. Time, time, time. All right, so it's what it says. So I'm at 89% charge, 222 miles of range. Ever since I've towed with this vehicle, it's totally changed. You know, meaning this thing should have about a 330 mile you know, range. And so anyways, the uh, here's my battery, look at this, low power. It's all about battery power. More than ever, it's all about battery power. I mean, that's a whole other discussion. What's going on with Dodge right now? So uh, follow, follow me along on the EV, you know, conversations and other things here. If you look at my screen there, it says 1,769 miles. Now, when I got this truck... It literally, you know, I get this truck and then I left town and I did a tow review on it and then I brought it home and I haven't driven it for six weeks. And the reason I bring that up is, you know, if I was just to drive one vehicle, you know, I can put 5,000 miles on one vehicle very quickly in one month. I mean, I can do that, if not more. So, and that's a conversation because I've got some people 
making comments about my video from yesterday, the Raptor idea, which what's going on with that, right? Uh-oh, got to get the mailman. My mailman is too fast. Did anybody complain about the mailman? This guy just rocks and rolls. I can't get this guy fast enough. Yeah, my mailman, I'm not lying. You know, a lot of people complain about the mailman. Jesus Christ, my guy, this guy just, by the time I get out of my office, you know, this guy's gone. Then sometimes I have to drive to the post office. But anyways, so, you know, the reason I'm talking about the mileage thing here is, do we go to sport mode? Let's go to sport mode. You know, that sport mode really is, oh my gosh, I drove this thing back in yesterday. This thing is so freaking fast. I mean, yikes. All right, so do we go to the sport mode? I think we go to the sport mode. Oh my, so when I hit that sport mode, this thing just instantly just accelerated. I mean, oh, this thing is just so torquey and, uh, I mean, it's just extreme fast. And when I was driving back in yesterday, I really got into this thing, and oh, this thing's just, it's just wicked fast. I mean, you know, it doesn't have that, you know, that exhaust note coming out of it, which I know we all want to hear. I know the Ice Age, Ice Age people like me love that exhaust note, but it, this thing is just wicked speeds. I mean, just, you know, I'm not going to even talk about the speeds, okay? I'm not going to incriminate myself. So, now... Uh, yeah, so then the next thing is that that was the Monday reveal, and that was kind of a happy, sad moment. Meaning, you know, Dodge is sharing with how they're gonna give us another year of the Ice Age, and you're gonna have some pretty crazy, I you know, potential to buy a thousand horsepower plus car. They're not telling the number yet, but they got a license tag that says one. Fast 29, you know, so one number one, then FAST, and then 29 at the end of the plate. And you can watch this on the YouTube channel of the Dodge, you know, reveal with Tim K. They've got on YouTube, and it's they've already have two videos published. Third video will be published today, and today is supposed to be, I guess, you know, the future reveal of the next, you know, Hellcat product which, you know, is going to be electric. You know, Dodge has already officially made it known that the next performance side of the Dodge product will be electric, all electric, and will not be any hybrid or gas combinations. So there's a lot of love-hate going on now in the Dodge community because, yeah, everybody loves how Dodge is going to give us another year of the, the product, and they're going to give you a lot of aftermarket options to modify your car. And, and you know, there's going to be support there for that. But the other, you know, side of the equation, a lot of people are uh, really, you know, not happy that the Dodge is, you know, abandoning the Ice Age. And, you know, and to many, they're catering to the Green Agenda movement. And, uh, you know, they call it the Woke movement, all that stuff, which I've mentioned that the other day in my video, that how more than ever, you know, the board members and the stockholders are pushing the agenda to transition out of the ice age more than ever into the EV age. So, you know, it's a lot of, uh, I don't know if you want to say it the political theater, but it's, I would have to say it's more of the green agenda movement that's happening worldwide to save the planet by using electric vehicles over ice age vehicles, which I think a lot of people just aren't sold. And that's really the answer to our world challenges. You know, is it more of a money grab change of wealth you know there's a lot of things that go into that so many variables so many discussions and i'm not going down that road and you know and here i'm one of the guys that owns electric vehicles but i'm not on the page that i bought my electric vehicle that's gonna now make it so the world's gonna live that much longer that isn't kind of the way i look at it i look at it more of i like the technology and uh you know and they're fun vehicles and, you know, I'm just that type of person. I just like the latest, greatest things. If you can't tell, I mean, that's not me making up stories. Just look at all my videos of all the different vehicles I buy and sell. And the list goes on and on and on. So the Dodge thing, you know, I uh, I wrote in my Dodge forum. I'm pretty, uh, I'm into the Dodge forum community. And I wrote a whole, you know, the happy, you know, the happy, <coughs> eight years ago, the happiness of Dodge to eight years later the sadness of Dodge and it's just what I you know talked about 
was on how, you know, eight years ago, Dodge had the big reveal of the Dodge Hellcat with 707 horsepower, and it was one of the first mass-produced cars that, for even for me, I never dreamed in my lifetime when I was growing up, and I had Dodge Challengers and uh, yeah, Plymouth Cuda. I never dreamed that one day I'd be able to buy a factory 707 horsepower car. So yeah, I'm sure some people right now are saying, well, yeah, what happened to the Raptor? The Raptor. What happened to the Raptor deal? Okay, okay. Well, I'm not there yet. I don't, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm still kind of sharing some stories and, and I don't know yet, you know, uh, I'm still thinking about that and the dealer hasn't called me and kind of numbers are kind of crunching. So I don't really have that information right now this morning because the key finance guy I deal with, I don't think he gets into 11 o'clock. And so I don't know, you know, he'd be the guy that really kind of gets me to kind of come to closure what makes sense or doesn't. So I'm not really there for the answer on that. But, you know, something I did want to share with you is Dodge. I mean, Dodge, if you're a Dodge person, you're probably uh, familiar with Tim K. I call him Tim K. Tim Kanuskis, I think is his name. Kanuskis, Kaniskis. Um and he's the Mopar SRT, you know, performance brand, you know, head lead man that is the guy that introduced the Dodge Hellcat in the summer of 2014. And he's been the key guy behind the scenes that's kept the product design and development and the, uh, you know, the product live on. And, and if, whether you realize or not, Dodge is now owned under the uh, Stellantis group, which is Peugeot. You know, it's, it's like Peugeot, Alfa Romeo, you know, Maserati, Fiat, um, Dodge, and uh, Ram, and Jeep. They're all one big group now. You know, it's a worldwide company. European flair is what I call it. So Stellantis is much more that European, you know, stronghold of where the, the headquarters are, and they're much more of the European, you know, mindset, so they're taking Dodge just to hold our direction, and, and the reason I'm talking about this is Dodge is having three days of reveal days, you know, so Tim K had uh, on, I believe, Monday, they had the big reveal day of where is the Dodge, you know, where's the Dodge Challenger Hellcat product going, you know, including the Charger, but what's going on with Dodge? What's the plans? So Tim did a big reveal sharing that how Dodge is going to have like the Ford Cobra Jet Mustang, that's a track purpose vehicle only. They're going to have that availability and then they're going to have a Dodge body, just a Dodge Challenger body. We can just buy the Dodge Challenger body and then, you know, make it your race car, whatever you want to do. Then they're going to have with Intercore. You know, they have relationships with Intercore, if I'm saying that correctly, a carbon fiber retro 1969 Dodge Charger body that you're going to be able to buy and do whatever you want to do with it. And uh, and then they also disclose on how 2023 is officially the last year of the Dodge Char Challenger Charger Hellcat gas engine option availability, and then it's over. So 2023 is the last model year of the Dodge ICE vehicle. And apparently they're gonna make a unique, rare, you know, uh, build. We're all speculating a, a one and done, limited production, thousand plus horsepower, you know, Challenger car that only dealers will be able to order. Meaning nobody will be able to order it and only high volume specific criteria dealers We'll get this one of maybe 600, you know, limited production cars, which you know as well as I do, this thing's going to be stupid ADM. It'll be ridiculous. If Dodge doesn't put a criteria on dealers can't mark it up, which I doubt they'll put that in there, people will be, I guarantee you, paying 50 to 100 grand. They'll be paying, a, I imagine, $200,000 for this last run outdo the demon you know uh if you're a dodge guy the demon was a 3000 run 840 horsepower street track ready you know car and that car you know sold out rather quickly and those numbers went from you know being like a 
eighty thousand dollar, ninety thousand dollar car to people paying one hundred and twenty five, hundred and forty, hundred fifty thousand dollars to those demons. So if this is factual, then yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that if there's a six hundred, and I'm not sure if that's the number of units per se, but I'm just sharing information on what we're hearing, and we're gonna find out more as time progresses. But my guess is that you know it's gonna be, if, you know, you could be so lucky to get one, you're gonna pay a lot of money to try to get that vehicle. Yeah. So you know. So anyway, so coming back in yesterday, just did some really quick blips here and there and this thing at high speeds just it just rocks i mean it just rolls can't emphasize enough this thing just is just too fast i mean borderline these electric vehicles it's it's something you don't think about because if you're not driving these things you just don't know you know like you pull up to a curb like when you're driving somewhere to close proximity this thing has so much torque you can just by accident kind of push this thing and climb a curb. Yeah, yesterday I was pulling to McDonald's and I kind of, you know, pulled in and I haven't been driving this thing at all. You know, I've been away from it and anybody that drives a vehicle, you know when you're not driving something, you, you know, you just kind of lose that, uh, you know, you just kind of lose the presence of the vehicle. You just kind of know how it acts and you know your proximity. There's a lot of things that play out, that's why driving a car every day you become more efficient and more attuned to the vehicle so for me i'm in in and out of so many different vehicles that you know you jump in one and it's just a whole new kind of like learning experience and if you watch the videos you see every now and then i'm befuddled it's like jesus christ what's i forgot about that feature because i'm just in and out of so many different vehicles and or am i just stupid right <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to comment on that one. You're just dumb. You dummy. Yeah, so uh, so anyways, you know, the whole point is, unless your vehicle has so much torque, instantaneous, you know, from those electric motors, that, you know, you can do yourself a disservice because you'll, you know, you'll do damage to your damn vehicle just to park a lot, you know, which that's what I'm saying. Yesterday, I pulled to McDonald's, and I literally didn't realize I was on the curb, and I gave a little, you know, push on the pedal, and all of a sudden I'm like over the curb, just about into the freaking post to put a dent in the front of the damn vehicle. Yeah, right. So you're probably saying right now, what the hell does this have to do with yesterday's video where you're talking about buying a Raptor, right? Well, you know, I just like to share information because uh, this is the EV age that I'm, you know, I'm still fresh and new to, that I'm still learning, and you know, and the list goes on of that, and. And it's interesting how, you know, I've had a comment, dump the freaking lightning truck and get the Raptor. I mean, I'm going to tell you now, I'm not embellishing. I could probably sell this truck back to the dealer, conservative for 10, more, 10 grand more than I paid for it. It's possible I could get 20 grand more. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. But, but why, right? But for me... Yeah, here's somebody, and, and I don't disagree, that Raptor truck, as far as just really nice, great vehicle, you know, to sacrifice this for that, and if I was a person that didn't do the driving I do, then, you know, I would maybe be on the page, maybe, you know, debatable, because this F-150 Lightning is not a dime a dozen product that you can sell today and get another one tomorrow, so that's kind of, versus the Raptors, you know, as well as I do, there's going to be a lot of Raptors out there to always pick up, that'll just never change. The F-150 Lightning, not so much, you know, without stupid numbers, you're watching my video, you saw how the salesman there was saying they could probably take this vehicle and marketed for $140,000. Wow. You know, and it wouldn't surprise me, you know, with the low mileage in this right now. I mean, it only has 1,700 miles on it, so it's so brand new still that somebody would pay a buck 30, maybe a buck 40 for it. I mean, yikes. So, yeah, I hear you, but I drive, you know, about 150 to 200 miles when I work out in the field. So this electric vehicle for me, it really does save me a lot of money on fuel. And, you know, initially, I never really bought the vehicle for that. But as time progresses, I've mentioned this, you know, numerous times, that, boy, once you ride around these electric vehicles and you accomplish what you want to accomplish, 
and you don't have to go to the gas station. You can go back home and plug it into your outlet. You know, it's it's hard to get it's hard to to go back to the gas station because you're like you know you're gonna go spend you know like yesterday I went like 250 miles. So if I was driving one of my regular trucks, you know they're really about 15 mile. I would just say the average truck's 15 miles per gallon, full size one. We could go to 17, 18, at least 15 miles a gallon. So that's basically, you know, what, about 15 gallons of fuel? 10 times 15 is 150, 75, 225. Yeah, so, you know, we're basically 17 gallons of fuel. Well, if you just take $4 gas, we'll just take $4 gas, 4 times 15 is $60, and... Two times four is eight, sixty-eight dollars. So, yeah. So today, I would have to put in close to seventy dollars worth of fuel today. And today will probably be a little, about more like a hundred mile, hundred twenty mile drive today. And you know, so that's the thing for me. You know, I'm going to the gas station when I'm driving my gas vehicles. If not every day, every other day, it just depends on which vehicle I'm driving. So, and then the gentleman that works for me, he's driving my Mach E. And that vehicle right now has has to go to service because it's got 10,000 miles on it. So if you factor 10,000 miles and me driving another vehicle, even at 20 miles per gallon, I don't, you know, I would say it's more like 18 between all my vehicles at best, you know, divided by 10,000 miles and you factor the fuel that was at 450 a gallon, that no lead, you know, and you, know, you factor all those numbers in, and that's a car payment. You know, that vehicle pays for itself just for me not buying fuel. So it's either give the gas station, the oil industry money, or pay the car company. So that's the reason that the, the electric vehicle for me, you know, really does work. And once again, I never really was on the path to buying an electric vehicle based on just because I'm going to save money on fuel. Because I still have ICE cars and I still buy gasoline. But it is a nice thing. And what I've learned is... When you do drive around and you accomplish a lot of things without buying gas, uh, you know, it's once again, it's hard to go back to the gas station to justify, you know, buying more gas. And, uh, oh my gosh, we got a guy here in a truck and trailer that's going like no speed. I don't know what this guy's doing. He's got challenges. That's for dang sure. Is he saving fuel? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, gotta wonder about that, right? Get a little coughed up there. You talk a lot, right? Early in the morning too. So, uh, so you know, I, I wrote a whole article in the uh, forum about how Dodge, you know, 2014. I still remember Tim K revealing that Dodge Challenger Hellcat, and I was instantly like, I want one of those, you know. And it took me from August of 2014. Till like November, I think it was November of 2015 to get mine. And that's a whole other story and how I was one of the first at the Dodge dealer there I lived to put an order in and <clears throat> and I never got that 2015 uh, Dodge Challenger Hellcat because the dealer, unbeknownst to me, gave my order to one of his personal friends that owned the big heating and air conditioning company that, you know, he that he gave my order to. But it actually worked. It worked out because I bought the I bought the white knuckle, I believe it was, or the white. And they didn't have plum crazy available at that time, and so by me not getting that 2015, the 2016 model year gave me the opportunity to get the plum crazy. So, you know, I took it in stride. I didn't get radical. I didn't get you know mean. I was like, oh well, and you know, and it all worked out because in 2014 when you ordered a Hellcat. The reality was there was such a backlog of these orders, even to the point that eventually the government got involved in looking into Dodge because so many people ordered these Hellcat Challengers and Dodge couldn't build them fast enough that, you know, Dodge was investigated for misleading the public on what they could sell and buy. And that was a whole other story. That's just how radical that Dodge Challenger was, you know, sought after. That Dodge Challenger... It was a worldwide, you know, eye opener, and to the, even the point, the Saudi, the Saudis, the Kuwait elitists, the rich people of the world, richer than rich, 
they even wanted these these cars, you know. And the, back then, it was like a sixty-one thousand dollar car, fifty-nine nine or something like that. And he optioned it out. It got into like sixty-two, you know, and sixty-four really well loaded up Challenger. And so, you know, the point is, when I ordered my two thousand fifteen model, even though I, the, the dealer stole my order and gave it to his friend. He didn't get that vehicle till like the following late winter, early spring. Well, I ordered my 2016 model, and I got that thing in uh, in late, uh, you know, November. I've got a call here. Oh, the distractions, right? Good Lord. So I was talking here about the EVs and Dodge, and Jesus Christ, now I've lost my whole, you know, thought process here because I just had to meet up. Oh, here we go. Here's the phone call about the, uh, the Raptor truck. <laughs> boy look at this here good old beltway dc traffic you look at the fees that they're charging if i want to go stay on this road i'm going to spend like six bucks to drive up the road i mean talk about ridiculous jesus christ ridiculous i'm getting out of this lane yeah a lot of noise right yeah it's such a beautiful day up here that I'm just taking the uh, the wind in because it's, ah, uh, geez. When you live up here in this D.C. area, man, I mean, it's just, uh, it's not like it used to be because of all well, everybody working at home, but it, the traffic still is a challenge, that's for sure. So, you, so you're probably all wondering, what the hell is going on? The dealer, you said, just called about the truck, the rapper truck. Well, it's never simple. <laughs> It's like, you know, it comes to buying a truck. The many cars I buy, you know, the finance people just are like, oh my God, this guy, it's not that easy. It's a lot of behind the scenes finagling. So yeah, I don't have an answer yet on that because I don't even know if the numbers are going to be uh, workable. And that's the thing. I don't know, man. That truck's it's just, I told people over a year ago, year and a half ago, two years ago, the used car market pricing is so crazy don't buy a used car yeah yeah hypocrite right it's the hypocrite channel i don't i don't disagree you you've bought some used cars and you've paid a lot of money for them right yeah i have you know so yeah so that's a challenge but at the end of the day this raptor is basically brand new and just for the record you know the raptors on dealer lots these guys get 20 grand over 10 grand over you know, typically a Raptor will get 10 plus over ADM. And that's hard to escape that unless you order your own and all that other stuff. So it's all just a numbers game. So for me, yeah, these guys are wanting, you know, 10 grand over in this vehicle. More like 14 grand over, which I haven't agreed to that. And that's a whole nother variable. You know, would I pay 10 grand over, nine grand over? Hmm. It really comes down to the trade values. So if they give me strong trade values, and that's what I tell people, it's just you're just kind of moving numbers around, which that's a whole other discussion. So yeah, I don't have the answer yet on that, just because we're still kind of working on the numbers. And you know, once again, I don't know. You know, I just don't know if I really want to buy a Raptor or not. It's just yesterday I was on the page of going to Coons, Baltimore Ford, and buying a Raptor. Yeah, it really wasn't. You know, I mean, that's the reality. I was not on the page going there yesterday to buy a truck. But yet then, it's just the same old story. I roll into a dealership, and oh, there's something special sitting there. And Yeah, and there's a lot of videos I've never made where, yeah, I've done a lot of behind-the-scenes deals that never panned out. I mean, that's that's very factual. It's because I just don't feel good about the deal, and, or the numbers just don't make sense, you know. So that happens a lot, too. You know, meanwhile, just really enjoying my F-150 Lightning truck. And, you know, that's the thing. You know, what am I driving around in? You know, prior to the F-150 Lightning, I was driving around my Mustang Mach-E, you know. And was I driving my Ford Mustang GT500? Nope. Was I driving my Ford Mustang Mach-1? That's the lowest mileage car I've ever owned to date. I bought that car back. I'm thinking back in March, I think. That thing has 130 miles on it. That car's never even been on the highway. So right now, that's the lowest 
mileage vehicle I've ever owned. Ever. So, <laughs> you know, that's, and you know, do I part with that? You know, so here's the thing, behind the scenes, you know, I gotta start picking and choosing, what do I let go? If I go for this Raptor, I've got a GT350, there's a state boy over here, so, <clears throat> if I get the G, you know, I've got a GT350, which, you know, it's, it's respectable. It doesn't have a, uh, see there, Fairfax County Motorcycle Cops. Right, they ride, they ride in tandem. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the thing is, for me, this is the hard part I talked about yesterday. You know, what do I give up for the Raptor truck? And, you know, do I give up my Ford Shelby Super Snake two-door truck? You know, it's not really encouraged about that truck is that was a pricey truck and the numbers are putting on this truck, they're just not great numbers. I mean, so the truck, the downside is that two-door lowered Super Snake truck doesn't have any activity of sales in the market. So for you as a car, you know, dealership, to figure out a value in that truck in the market, you're in the blind. You have no data. You just don't really have any data to go off of what's going on with that truck because it's such a low production vehicle. And it's really a vehicle that just a unique person, yeah, like me, right? Yeah, you're unique. Yeah, I know. You know, buys it and doesn't drive it much and doesn't sell it. So they just have no data to really base the numbers. And so the numbers aren't really that great for me to part with that. That's number one. The GT350 is a 2016 first generation of that Voodoo motor that they actually end up redoing that Voodoo motor. And it's got the rear end sag, the rear end fanny, you know, challenge where the back uh, bumper kind of comes apart, you know, from the uh, the body. So it has like a sag look on it. You have to, it's the clips that kind of are the issue. And so, uh, so anyways, the GT350 2016, that's a really beautiful looking car, but it doesn't have the rev matching. And, you know, so that's kind of a, a bummer there so you know but could I par with that car you know I could but then I'm kind of losing my Shelby you know my Shelby you know uh, collection because I got the GT500 GT350 and the Super State Shelby so you know if you think about it if I let those two go for the Raptor you know is it worth it <clears throat> and that's where I'm kind of on the fence you know is it worth part with those two vehicles for that Raptor truck, you know, that's the challenge, and that's kind of why you're hearing kind of the hesitation from me, is, you know, I'm kind of giving up some really unique vehicles for a vehicle that, you know, does it, does the Raptor outweigh the fun factor of those two other vehicles, and, you know, the keeps being content, so that's kind of where I am right now, and, uh, and at the same time, we're still kind of crunching numbers to see if they make any sense. Boy, I tell you, this vehicle is just so fast. I mean, it is just wicked fast where you can just make maneuvers that are just, you know, borderline, you know, they get you in trouble. I mean, this thing here, I don't know if you just see how I just, you know, it's just, it's incredible. You know, and that's the thing about this truck. You ride around in it, and, you know, you just get this incredible, you know, power out of this thing. And, you know, it's just, oh, my gosh. It's hard. You know, it's kind of hard to justify to ride around a gas truck right now because of what I can do out of this vehicle. And, uh... You know, and so yeah, it's the EV. Has the EV ruined my passion for the, uh, you know, the Ice Age vehicle? You know, that's 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 the danger, and it hasn't because I still love my Bronco. I still love the gas engines. I still love that exhaust note. But when it comes to, for me, living out of a vehicle and working out of a vehicle, you know, the gas engine just now kind of like, but for what? For why? When I can be much more efficient. 
and I'm not sacrificing anything for what I do for the capabilities of this truck being local. You know, I get it. If you're driving up down the eastern sea seaboard in this truck and you're working out of it that way, yeah, I don't disagree. The vehicle then, you know, then it's more challenging because of the charging stations and you're not saving a lot of money, you know, you're just not saving a lot of money based on being on the field. Because if you're on the field, if you use 100 kilowatts of energy today to drive around, which we'll just say that's like 200 plus miles, and then you go to charging station tomorrow or this afternoon to recharge the vehicle, you know, to put 100 kilowatts back in the vehicle, that's going to be a 43 cent a kilowatt. You're going to be at $43. So in that scenario, you know, versus I said the numbers earlier, you're going to, if you have $3 gas, you know, borderline, you're even on what you're paying for electricity kilowatt to the gas you know so then in that scenario there if you're traveling on the roads yeah the electric vehicle doesn't really gain you anything yeah it gains you a lot of technology and you know it's definitely nice and neat but it doesn't gain you that savings of actually driving down the road on energy costs so you know so that's that's why for me you know there's the dilemma i buy the, the raptor truck and when do I drive it, right? Besides maybe use it to go to Florida or Tennessee to haul my trailer, my motorcycle trailer. And that's what I was trying to figure out yesterday. You know, the GVW trailer package is 7,800 pounds. So for me, that doesn't allow me to actually tow my car hauler and motorcycles. Because I've got a 28-foot car hauler that is a 12K... GVW, you know, once you put a car in that trailer, you're conservative 4,000 pounds, you're more like 4,500 pounds, and then you put two motorcycles in there, and you can be, you know, another 1,500 pounds, so that's six, that's you know, right there, that's 6,000 pounds, and a dang trailer weighs like 5,000 pounds, you know, so it's, it's such a big trailer, so you're like 11,000 pounds right there. So the, the Raptor will not take care of that. And even this truck here, I believe this truck here is, is topped out at 10K. I don't think it's 12K, but even if it was, it wouldn't even matter. Because, you know, we've already been through that video scenario where as you drive down the road, you're getting less than one mile per kilowatt. And it's, can you even imagine driving to Florida this vehicle? And then the charging station time and everything else. That would be a solid two-day trip. I would say at least two days. Aggravating trip. You know, so this isn't going to replace my, you know, what I'm, what I'm saying to you is on the Raptor truck, motorcycle trailer, yeah, it's going to work fine. I've got a smaller car hauler with just the car hauler itself. No motorcycles packed into it. Yeah, the Raptor would do fine on that, you know. And lately I haven't been using my car hauler motorcycle trailer because it's just a lot of truck and trailer. And I've got my kid that kind of follows me down in her car or whatever car I want to take down. So that's kind of changed too. So when I come to closure that I wouldn't buy the Raptor due to the tow capacity, that wouldn't be it. It'd be more about, okay, I'll get the Raptor, you know, how much am I going to use it? That's kind of the, that's where kind of the, the Ford Lightning F 150s ruined it. You know, and I'm not saying I wouldn't get in my Raptor truck and drive around and work out of it. I would. But would I as much as the F-150 Lightning truck? You know, I doubt I would. But, I, you know, but at the same time, I don't know. That F-150 Raptor is just so nice. You know, I've had a white one, brand new. Got sold that. Turned around, bought a used one, silver. Turned around, sold that. And now... I've been on the new Raptor series now since January of 2021, and I just never have pulled the, the trigger. And if that was a 37 package, you know, that would probably make it a lot more difficult not to buy it. But then again, the numbers, I guarantee it'd be 10 grand more. You know, so, you know, if anybody's wondering, you know, I'll just tell you, that's a $95,000 truck. They're with a ninety five grand. The truck is eighty one and change, brand new. 
So, you know, there's 14 grand over from the price when the guy bought it, but here's the question. When the guy bought it, did he pay ADM? Did the guy factory order it? I mean, what's the story about that vehicle? I have no idea. Did the guy get into financial hardships or he saw an opportunity to, to that he did pay just MSRP and the, and the dealer paid him 85 grand or 88 grand? But the thing is, when you put sales tax on his vehicles, you know, when you get 85 out of 81, if the guy paid three, four grand in sales tax, he just broke even, you know, so I don't know. But, you know, going back to the prices vehicle, here's the thing. Right now, the Coons organization, if you want a brand new Ford Raptor, they're 20 grand over. Can you get them down to 15 maybe? Maybe. Can you get them down to 10 grand? Down the road, maybe, if the things slow up. Yeah, you can give them to MSRP. Nah, that's not going to happen anytime soon unless the world comes to an end. But then everything's right. proportional. Your used vehicle is not worth anything. So, But the whole point is, so this truck here, that's that's the kicker. It's a lot of money for that truck. But they do hold their value. And for me, it's just like, eh. Yeah, that's a lot of ADM. So now, if I can get that thing for like eight grand over the original sticker price, for like, like 90, you know, eight, nine grand over from the original sticker, would I maybe do it? Maybe, but then it's the, it's the same story. I'm giving up some nice vehicles that I just don't know if I can part with them. So anyways, for the moment, that's the uh, second day of conversations, and maybe I'll have more later in the day, but for right now, we're kind of still in the negotiation hold mode. You know, if anybody here is watching my channel and you know and listening to me talk about buying another yet buy another vehicle, what number is this? If I was to buy that Raptor, you know, and here's the thing, I've got an F-150 Lightning, a whole other deal on an F-150 Lightning that'll probably happen in October, September, maybe. I would say now it'd be late September, probably more like October. But that's a whole other deal, you know, that I would have, but that isn't really for me. Yeah, so the last deal, the Ford Maverick, even though I ordered that, that was for my dad. You know, here I get an F-150 Lightning, antimatter, blue, coming in. That's not for me. It's for the, the business and a guy that works for me. So, you know, that's just, but it's another freaking purchase. You know, so, yeah, if I do this Raptor deal, you know, what number purchase is this for 2022? This could possibly go down as the most purchases ever in one year which <laughs> yeah yeah how crazy am i you know but what's i said yesterday the only way the raptor deal goes down i'm shedding two vehicles for one in all reality if i had any brains i'd shed four for one but yeah if i thought about that yeah, I've thought about it, but what do I give up? You know, so that's where you start going through this scenario. What do you give up? Do I give up the yellow Bronco, which I know for a fact that if I gave up the yellow Bronco, I'd get ten grand more from what I paid for it. You know, do I give up the Ford Mach One? That's just a wash, and what I paid for it, they basically paid for what I paid for it. So there's nothing there in that. The GT500, which I bought that back last summer. Why the hell would I part with that? But you know, I just for the hell of it asked them. What type of numbers on that? Believe it or not, GT 500's kind of gone down a little bit in uh, the, the value. You know, not radical, but it has gone down a little bit, which is kind of surprising. But you know what I think's going on? I bet you there's a lot of GT 500s are starting to sit around. You know, the, the big ticket items, you know, how much longer do people continue to buy big ticket items? When I think a lot of people are really starting to feel it in the pocket. And, you know, at what point do people start raising their hand? They're just like, I'm out. I just can't justify it anymore. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I'm out. I hear you. I mean, like I say, smart-wise, yeah, if, if I was really smart, I'd dump a lot of vehicles while the market's still pretty hot and just cash out a lot of them and, you know, just get rid of the debt and just free up for the future of something else. But, once again, what do I par with? I already told you the two. Could I part with a Mach 1? You know. 
Can I par with a Bronco? The yellow Bronco? Ah, uh, who the heck knows? Right? All right. We'll keep everybody attuned to what's happening as I find out more information as the day progresses. You know, in my travels, I talk all the time about how many car dealerships now have used car inventory for their whole dealership. I mean, if you were walking around with me yesterday at the Ford dealership, but this dealership here, this Volkswagen dealership, is totally turned into used Teslas. I mean, they, they just have a whole bunch of Teslas. And the, what's interesting, the Tesla, you know, uh, refurbished area is literally in this area, in Rockville, Maryland. I met a guy that actually works there, and uh, they refurbished all the leased and owned uh, Teslas and put them back out for sale. So I guess those guys are kind of in with Tesla, and they get all the premier, you know, preferred Teslas to put on their lot. I mean, you know, the electric, as you know, if you read the media, you know, the electric revolution's happening. You know, the manufacturers are selling every bit of every electric vehicle they get in stock, so... Why would you be buying used electric vehicles if you're a car dealership and, uh, and take advantage of that market? I and mean, that's what's going on. Just incredible. Who'd have thought that new car dealerships, for the most part, are used car dealerships now? And that's actually a pretty good point. You know, the old saying was new car dealers were in business to get used cars. You know, that's the truth. Used cars have more profit margins for a car dealership than a new car. I don't know so much about that now because it's stupid crazy. They get premium price for a vehicle or more, but you know, for years, new car dealers, you know, the basic saying was they were in business to buy your used car when you bought a new car from them. So they could turn around and take your used car and make some money. So. All right, back in the shop. And what am I doing now, right? Getting the wife's car charged up so that's why i get these two charging stations so get this one i'm gonna get my truck in and yeah it's all about moving cars around right I took the gt350 out yeah gt350 the look of it is just badass the ride it's nice i mean i like it i wish it had rev matching and that voodoo motor is such a temperamental motor where you gotta have you gotta be at 4500 4800 rpm that thing to come to life it's a race motor so it's just a dog if you don't drive it hard uh oh kids looking for me all right so now i did a 100 mile day today now tomorrow i get another long drive day which i won't make it so here's the thing it's only like 230 but i'm gonna be proactive i'm just I'm gonna plug this thing in now because uh, I'm just gonna plug this thing in now because if you don't, I mean, if you're watching my videos, it takes time to get this stuff charged. That's a challenge. And think about this I'm 11 cent per kilowatt for the uh, charging. Okay, so let me get this thing in here. Can I get it? So, what's this blue thing say? Halfway, probably. Yeah. So, you think right now I'm at 22 cent a kilowatt because I got 11 cent on this vehicle and I got 11 cent on this vehicle. So, and the gentleman that works for me, my other Mach E is up at his house and his mother, we set up his house with those electric chargers. Here goes the kid. So, uh, <clears throat> his mother gave him the electric bill, like doubled. She's like, uh, who's paying for this, <laughs> right? 